Okay, we are in volume 7 of the Bible story. Uh, my books are, I got the whole set. They're 70 years old. They still got the jackets on, the plastic jackets on them. Some of them are tearing because of the age. And they were kept uh, very pristine, uh, being as old as they are. Because uh, uh, Miss uh, Grandma Edna, I'm going to say, kept her house like a museum, which was really true. And I got in trouble for a lot uh, uh, for not keeping it like, like it. Okay, we are in part three of the book story. Of the Bible story and we have a painting right here by Russell Harlan and of course these books are 1956 not 55 like the others and this is the painting that we have you can see the Roman um, trees I call them Roman uh, Tuscany because I remember uh, the trees look like that in Roman and Tuscany that I've seen in pictures. And this was Russell Harlan, the, the painter. And it says, bidding his mother farewell, Jesus went out for his quiet, from his quiet home at Nazareth to three and a half years of ministry. He, preaching to the poor, teaching the people, and healing the sick. Yeah, three and a half. And it wasn't my camera. This printing is a little blurry. Um, it's just the way it's printed. I guess it was an old book. Uh, I think this book is, um, it's got a lot of, like it's put together different. Okay? It's not a pristine copy um, but don't worry about that it still has some stories okay part three story one exciting news life must have been very dull for the young people of Nazareth Nazareth in those far-off days they were no newspapers radios or television sets to tell them what is going on around the world about them. Apart from a few old books in the synagogues, in the synagogue, there were little or nothing for them to read. Wages were small, and week by week they worked in the fields or shop, shops to earn enough money to buy their food and pay their taxes. Pretty much like now. I live in a small town. Apart from the occasionally wedding or future funeral, nothing exciting ever happened. Some believe that Joseph must have died about this time, for he is not mentioned again in the story of Jesus' life. Yeah, and neither were his brothers and sisters either. Uh, they weren't, well, they weren't mentioned until is um till he came back through again um but that's in another story okay when jesus had his 21st birthday he was still just a carpenter working at his bench day after day making furniture or maybe mending wagons or cartwheels for from passing travelers See, passing travelers would mean different languages, too. Think about it. 21, 22, 23, 24. Slowly the peace, the peaceful and carefully careful years passed by. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. Came and went again and again. Harvest followed by seed time. 
babies were born and old people died, but still nothing important disturbed the quiet of Nazareth. Sabbath after Sabbath, Jesus and his mother walked along the quiet street to the synagogue and listened to some rabbi reading from the Holy Scriptures. It must have seemed to them like life in this old village might go on like this for, a, for all time to come. Then one day a man arrived with an unusual story, which quickly spread from one end of town to the other. Dropping into the carpenter's shop, he told Jesus about it. Down by the Jordan River, he said, at the place called Beth Barbara, Beth Barbara, Beth, let's see, Beth Abra, A B R A, Bathara, a strange man had begun to preach. Hundreds of people were going out to listen to him, even from as far away as Jerusalem. So powerful was his message that the whole country was getting excited about it. So, uh, yeah, uh, Nazareth is real close to the Jordan. It's also close to the uh, the Red the the Sea of Galilee. So, you know, just think of the area: a giant ocean, giant sea, and then rivers, and the water runs. The Jordan runs into the into the Sea of Galilee. And the Sea of Galilee runs into the Dead Sea, and the Dead Sea turns into another one, which goes into the ocean, which goes into the Persian Gulf, which goes into the Indian Ocean. I mean, I'm just going off. And then, of course, the 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 Red Sea goes up into the Mediterranean. Um, there's you can look it up. And watch the water, where, which way the waters are. All right, let me get back to the story because my brain just went. Okay, what is his name? Jesus, no doubt, asked. Uh, he called himself. He calls himself John, and he said he is preparing the way of the coming of the coming of some great person who is to become the judge and ruler of Israel. Does he tell the people to rebel against the Romans? Oh no, many Roman soldiers listen to him. He just tells everybody to repent and stop doing wrong so that they will be ready to meet the Messiah when he comes among them. And then, well, then he baptized them. He puts them right in the water to show that their sins have been all washed away. Are many being baptized? Oh yes, hundreds and hundreds. That wonderful sight. You ought to go down and see it. Ah, uh, but he kind of knew anyway. Just think about it. This is a little drama about it. And this kind of, uh, I'm thinking of the, the movie, uh, the Superstar movie. Huh. Was that the one I saw? Uh, I've seen so many of them. Okay. Let's get back to this. Uh, this is indeed, a, uh, indeed great news. And it must have been a solemn moment when Jesus was told, when Jesus told his mother about it. I can hear him say, Mother, Cousin John is beginning to preach. I must go to him. The time has come. Mary understood that. Understood. She had feared something like this might happen someday. Now her mind went back to the far off time, 30 years before, when Elizabeth told her that told her what the angel Gabriel had said about her baby John. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. 
uh, he had said, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, or Elijah, to turn the hearts of fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready the people, make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And then it has a picture of him. Um, it's a uh, divinely. And Jesus closing a door, or the character uh, that we normally typically see of Jesus closing the door. Maybe to his shop, maybe to his mom's house. Uh, we're not sure, it's just an uh, illustration. And of course, the, this book is going to have them with, looking English or Celtic, with the long hair and the beard. Um, my version, if I think his hair, of course, would be long, but I would think that he would have the braids that um, Samson would have, and, of course, his beard, since he was a Nazarene and he couldn't, and um, they're not supposed to cut their hair, and I'm sure he had to do it, too. So he would have the braids, and his beard would be braided, too. So he kind of probably would look like a gruffy old, uh, well, that's just me. Um, sometimes they wouldn't follow the Romans. The Romans were the ones that were more clean-shaven and haircut and everything. But, again, that's me. Um, you know, doing art-wise, that's what I would do. Okay. <clears throat> no doubt the time had arrived for Gabriel's wor words to come true. And if her own precious Jesus was indeed the son of the highest, as Gabriel ha had said he was, he must be the one about whom John was now preaching. Tenderly they said, they said farewell, both knowing in their hearts that the happy days in Nazareth were gone for good. Then clearly his bench, then clearing his bench for the last time and carefully putting away his tools, he would never again use, never use again. Jesus closed the door of his carpenter shop and set out for the Jordan. It was parting it was the parting of the ways for him. Behind him lay the precious memories of his childhood and youth, with pleasant work days and happy Sabbaths around his old home, and hours of bliss spending with his heavenly father upon the mountain side and in the nearby fields and forests. Ahead were days of toil and sorrow, of temptation and trial. G Messiah would be king someday, he knew, but he must die before he could reign again. A man of sorrows and acquaintance with grief, he would be. The Holy Scriptures said so. Yet he did not draw back. He must now begin the wonderful ministry of preaching, teaching, and healing and healing to which God had called him. Sturdily brave striding striding okay stridingly bravely down the step the steep mountain trail he made his way to John, to Bethabar, Bethabar, Gethsemane, and Calvary. And then it has him walking, a picture of him going to the Jordan. 
And of course, like I keep saying, it's the printing of the book, not my camera. A little bit blurry, but of course, 80 year old, uh, 70 year old book, so I'm saying 80, but it's about 70. And that was the end of part three, story one. And it looks like somebody may have been reading this and spilt some coffee on it. Yeah, because it's got some stains. I, and maybe these are first editions. Uh, or baby proofs of. Um, maybe there's also cigarette stains, because I know that. Okay, well, that was the end of part three, story one. Time for a break, and then we'll be right back.